Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Chamber 101. Uh, today's topic is e-commerce. Uh, we're super excited to have uh, Solon Chamber member, member Elise in Studios uh, here to present. Uh, it's going to be super exciting. Just a note, uh, during the course of the presentation, uh, there'll be several poll questions that pop up to uh, uh, get you thinking about what questions you might have, uh, et cetera. Uh, as well as this uh, record, this presentation is being recorded uh, and will be posted on our on our website along with the slide deck. Uh, so we're we're excited to have those who are able to to join us this morning, uh, and we're going to go ahead and get started. So just before I turn it over, I want to thank uh, some of our uh, investors this year. Uh, we, we switched to a tier dues platform. Uh, for 2021 uh, and it's generated about fifty thousand dollars in in support of the chamber in the form of dues and other uh other financial support so uh we're super excited to thank uh swage lock rap tight aflac uh Maznik, and nestle uh the next slide would be the whole presentation if i if i decide to name it all so i'll just leave it up for 20 seconds or so but you can see the amount of support uh the civic investors are four thousand dollars plus Key investors, $2,500 plus, uh, and everybody here on the next page uh, was $1,000 uh, plus from uh, a, an investment standpoint. So a huge thank you to, to all these sponsors that allow us to uh, make sure that we, we are sticking true to our strategic plan and mission, which is to be a go-to resource for the business community, uh, continue to grow uh, and help uh, Solon and the surrounding communities prosper uh, from a business perspective. Uh, there will be no technical difficulties today because this is my last slide. So uh, I'm super <laughs> excited to turn it over to uh, Connor Moriarty from Elyson, and he's going to get uh, he's going to get us started. Sounds good. Thanks, Tom. I'm going to swap this over to my presentation. All right, and is everybody seeing that? Cool. I see thumbs up. That's what I like to see. All right, so um, thanks again. Um, as Tom said, I'm Connor Moriarty. I'm the studio manager here at Elysian Studios. And today we're talking about um, everything e-commerce. Um, I would first and foremost, just like to thank Kaylin and Tom um, and the Solon Chamber for putting this together. I think it's really awesome what you guys are doing, um, kind of bringing us together, especially in these times. I think it's more important than ever to, you know, have the community come together, help each other out um, and partner as uh, businesses together around here as a local community. So I appreciate everything you guys are doing. Um, I also have with me in the studio, come on here, Mia and Samir. Um, Samir is the president of our company and Mia is our marketing specialist. Um, Samir is going to have a little bit of a, um, you know, presentation kind of about our company in a second here. And then uh, Mia is going to be in charge of our hand cam when we do a little demo here in a second. So thanks guys. I'll bring you back in a second. <laughs> All right, we'll start, we'll start things right off with a poll here to get everybody kind of involved. So I'm more so curious, how many of you sell products online or have a need to represent your business or brand visually? Um, you should see a poll popping up on your screen. Um, just let me know. And we'll give that a few seconds. Yes, I can't do it. Hopefully it's working. We'll wait a couple more seconds for everything to come in. Okay. So, yeah, so I'm seeing, is everybody seeing the results? Can everyone see the results, Tom? Yep, cool. So um, a majority of people said yes, which is awesome. That's what I love to hear. For the people that said no, um, I think that we are um, gonna have a great conversation here today about how um, if you're selling anything online, you can benefit from prior, um, prioritizing your visual content for your brand. So um, real quick, 30,000 foot view of who we are. Um, Elysian Studios, we're essentially an end-to-end -end photography studio. Um, we do outsourced product photography for businesses that need it. Um, our three core services are our photography, video, and interactive 360 spins. Um, also, I'll show you examples of all of those things later on in the, um, in the webinar. Um, and really what we're in the business of doing is just making the studio experience or the product photography experience um, faster, easier, easier, and more affordable um, than the, the way it's typically done, been done in the past. 
Um, and then we also, we like to call ourselves visual storytellers because we aren't just a transactional service. Um, we try to um, collaborate with the brands um, that work with us and you know learn about their brand and learn how to tell a story about their brand, not just take photos of their brand. Um, and I think um, anyone who sells products can benefit from partnering with us. So, um, and most importantly for everybody on this call today or on this webinar today, we are offering um, a 15% off discount off your first order with us for um, as a thank you for everyone for logging on, tuning in with us today. So um, as a thank you, if you, um, there will be contact information if you wanna reach out to me at the end of this presentation. So that 15% off offer um, applies to our retail pricing for anybody on this call. Here's an example of some of the work we do. So this is the bulk of what we do, clean, elegant, on white product photography. Um, this is our bread and butter. Um, as you can see, we shoot quite a variety of products. There isn't really much that we don't shoot. Um, we're really just in the business of doing really beautiful high res images um, for any business that might sell anything. But we also do stuff like this. We call this stylized or lifestyle photography. Um, this kind of stuff uh, is ideal for marketing, advertising, email campaigns, social media, all that kind of stuff. This is just a more flashy way, uh, a more captivating way of showcasing your products to your customers. And then finally, we also um, most recently upgraded our studio to do on-model work as well. Um, so this is all kind of stuff that we do as well. Um, yes, this is apparel brands um, or you know shoots for boutiques and whatnot, but we do on-model work for a variety of products. So I think um, most everybody can benefit from on-model work as well. Real quick, I'll run through the agenda for today. So um, in a moment, we're gonna have um, a quick introduction from our president, Samir, who you just, who you just met a second ago. Um, then we're gonna come back to me. I'm gonna um, give another quick overview of our business. And then I'm gonna do a live demo. We're gonna show you the fun stuff. We're gonna show you, um, you know, how, the, how everything is done, how we produce what you just saw. And then we're gonna dive into the, um, into the bulk of the presentation. We're gonna talk about the e-commerce industry, kind of the trends and where it's going, uh, the importance of product photography in a digital age, um, the e-commerce e as a customer experience. That's when we'll talk about even more than just product <coughs> photography. And then we'll wrap things up with the ROI of prioritizing visual content for your businesses. And then we'll open everything up for a Q and A at the end. Um, so if you, if you, if you want, uh, to ask a question in real time, I believe you can send a message to Tom and um, he'll you know, send it off to me. But for the most part, uh, if you can just hold all, all questions till the end when we have a, the questions time. And then the goals for this, you know, hopefully by the end of this presentation, you can understand the impact that product photography can have on your business, especially in the post COVID digital era, um, as well as understanding the ROI of updating your product photography and then how to facilitate the best possible online customer experience. Because if you're selling products or selling anything online, that's really what's important is uh, your customer experience and how your customers are involved with your brand. And finally, um, we are on social media. Um, we do have a lot of visual content, obviously. So we're very active on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. So feel free to give us a follow. All right, and I'm now gonna introduce uh, Samir, who is the president of our company. Good morning, everyone. Uh... Thanks for taking the time to uh, get to know us a little bit and a big shout out to the chamber who have done a stellar job of supporting us and helping us uh, in so many different ways. I can't even begin to express my gratitude. Uh, we are a company uh, which was founded in 2004. Uh, Pro Image Experts is the parent company which was uh, started right here in Solon. And what started off as converting 35 millimeter images to digital has now evolved into something quite substantial where we have a very sound footprint in not only the uh, North Americas, but in uh, Germany, uh, Europe, uh, Australia, uh, and New Zealand. Uh, we have a team of about uh, 500 on-staff editors who do the post-production work, editing work for professional photographers. So we've been in the photography world for quite some time and over the years have really kind of started diversifying a little bit and adding some additional arrows to our quiver. Uh, about seven years ago, we started uh, Halo Renders, which is a 3D architectural firm and product modeling firm for you know, high-end uh, engineered products that need a different type of visual storytelling 
uh, we can actually render that product in 3D. And then uh, Elysian came about, uh, I think it was uh, August uh, of last year. And even though uh, the founders and I had been talking about launching this kind of a studio, I think it just got a little bit more accelerated due to the pandemic because we understood right there and then that there were going to be new challenges uh, presented to local businesses and national businesses who were not ready to handle uh, the shutdown that we've all had to witness. So Elysian kind of came about, we invested in some state-of-the-art technology, uh, which Connor will talk to you a little bit more about, and also brought Connor on board, uh, who came to us from Zulily. He spent uh, almost five years managing a team of 30 plus uh, in their uh, studios in Columbus. So he brings a lot of that depth in uh, product photography and fashion photography. So we're here, uh, we would love to uh, get to know you guys, understand what your needs are and come up with some ideas for you as well and uh, hopefully propel you to new heights. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Connor. Thank you everyone again. Awesome, thanks Samir. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll give you a little bit of uh, more background kind of about me, why, why I'm here. Samir um, started things off there a little bit. Um, as I said earlier, my name's Connor. I'm the studio manager here. Um, I handle both the day-to-day -day operations um, of the studio um, production, but I also um, am in charge of kind of the long-term creative direction of the brand. I work closely with Mia on our marketing team. Um, and before joining Elysian, as Samir said, I was with a company called Elysian, or sorry, Zulily.com. Um, they are a large online retailer located in Columbus, Ohio. And um, I managed the studio there for um, almost five years. And I learned very valuable insights about the e-commerce industry, um, as well as where the e-commerce industry is going. Um, and then the impact that product photography can have on vendors and um, companies of all sides, lar sizes, large and small. Um, and then, yeah, I was brought on to the Elysian team here this past summer to kind of outfit the studio with the necessary equipment and processes and infrastructure to build um, kind of a newer um, business model that's never really been seen in the product photography industry. So that's kind of a 30,000 foot view of us and myself. We're going to start things right off with a video here. So kind of a informal slogan that we use internally is you ship it, we shoot it. Um, we say that because we try, we're trying to facilitate an experience where all you have to do as our customers get your products to us and we take care of the rest. Um, we do learn about your brand and um, invest in your brand, but essentially we try to make this as easy as possible for our, our, uh, our customers. So we're going to play this video real quick. And please, if somebody can't hear this, please raise your hand or something. <laughs> Your business is important to you, and how you visually represent your brand online is crucial for bringing in customers and increasing sales. But with the majority of people shopping online rather than in stores, how do you stand out? Introducing Elysian Studios, the one-stop shop for e-commerce photography, 360 product spins, and product video. Headquartered in Cleveland, Ohio, Elysian makes it possible to order professional quality photography and video, all from the comfort of your home or office. It's as easy as going to our website, filling out a short form and sending us your products. And we take it from there. Product photography just got easy. Here's how it works. We've invested in advanced studio technology and automation, allowing us to produce photography faster and less expensive than the competition without sacrificing quality or the personal touch of a creative photographer. When you place an order on our website, you tell us exactly what you're looking for. Then when we receive your products, we style, shoot, and edit your photos in record time. You can approve the photos online and place comments if revisions are required. Then you download your images, and we either return the products to you or donate them to a local charity. A quarter of all online product returns are because the product the customer received looks different than it did in the photo. Successful online sales is all about giving your customers all the information they need to feel comfortable making a well-informed purchasing decision. So do that with stunning, elegant product photography on white or a color of your choice. This is the best way to show your awesome products in all their intricate details. Or maybe try out a 360 spin, the future of e-commerce, allowing your customers to interact with your products and view every angle when and how they want to. Or maybe your product has particular functionalities or movement best represented with video. 
We offer clean, simple, on-white product video, perfect to bring movement to your website or social media. We even offer stylized or lifestyle photography, perfect for advertising, marketing, social media, and website branding. This type of content is the best way to stand out from the competition. Whatever you choose, Elysian is here to help you, offering personalized customer service with our studio team every step of the way. From the moment you place an order, you will have a direct line of communication with a studio team member here to answer questions and help you stand out from the crowd online. When you're ready, click get started and begin your journey with us to produce awesome visual content. Elysian Studios, product photography finally got easy. Okay, thank you voice from the clouds. Okay, so just to reiterate that um, the way it works here, very simple. Um, after a quick customer consultation or an order placement online, whether that's on our online checkout, um, an email, a phone call, uh, the products are sent to us, we receive them, and then we take care of the rest. We prep, the, we prep them. Um, that can be, you know, style, uh, sorry, steaming apparel. It can be assembling something that needs assembly. Um, and then we style and shoot. We go through an approval and revision process, and then we return the products. Um, but actually, one of the coolest things um, about this whole thing is that about 70 to 75% of our um, customers actually choose to donate their items. Um, we're affiliated with a few local charities, um, and we like to um, donate some of those products, um, whether it's because the products have been opened and they can't be sold then, or because it's more expensive to ship them than just bite the bullet. So um, I think that's really cool that um, so many of our customers are willing to um, donate their products to a good cause. And then the last little bit spiel we're going to talk about with our company is just a quick live demo. We're going to show you some of the fun stuff. And all of this really is to just kind of give you guys an idea of why we're doing this um, and why we're credible and talking about the e-commerce industry. So I'm going to quickly do a five minute demo. And this, and like I said, this is, this is the fun stuff. So um, I'll kind of show you how the bread is made. Let me swap over my screen share. Okay. So we're going to show you a really cool piece of our automation here in our studio. So we do have very traditional um, photo equipment in the studio, but we're going to show you probably one of our coolest pieces of technology. And we're going to swap over to our hand cam, I believe. Um, I think Kaylin's going to swap us over. Are you guys seeing the hand cam? Are you guys seeing the hand cam? Not yet. Are you got Kaylin, are you seeing the hand cam? Okay. All right, cool. So I'm going to hand the phone over to Mia. She's going to be a little hand cam expert for here for a second. And I just wanted to give you guys an idea of kind of what this piece of equipment looked like um, so that when I show you the screen, you know what you're looking at. Um, so this is a really amazing piece of technology. Um, it's a self-contained photo booth. Um, in it, and Mia, you can come in a little closer and kind of show inside of it. Um, inside of it, there's six LED panels, totally um, customizable and programmable from the computer. It has an automatic turntable in there, um, as well as two places for cameras. There's a camera up front and then a camera up top as well. Yep. And everything about this machine is completely controlled from the computer here. Um, it allows us to automate quite a bit. And um, so, yeah, so we just kind of wanted to show you what that what this equipment looked like. So when you're um, seeing the demo on my screen share here, you kind of have an idea of what you're looking at. So I think we should be all good with the screen share. Thanks, Mia. Okay, cool. And now we can swap it back to my screen. Cool. Uh, are you seeing my screen now? Yep. Good, Kaylin. Okay, cool. All right, so what you're looking at um, is the what I'm looking at on my screen. So this uh, is, we placed a shoe in here and the only manual part of this process is placing the product in the booth and actually positioning the camera. Everything else is completely done on the screen here. Um, I can change my light in there, depending on how I wanna light the products. I have a multiple presets in here. I can change settings on my camera. And I can even give it a little bit of a spin with our automatic turntable, which is pretty cool. So this just allows us to automate um, this whole process and do things quite more efficiently. So I'll get this set up for a shot real quick. So traditionally, the way product photography would work without this type of equipment is 
Um, somebody would hire me as a photographer. I'd go into their studio or into their office or warehouse um, for maybe half a day, shoot a hundred products. Um, but then I would have to take all those photos, go home afterwards, and then spend hours editing them, retouching, color correcting, as well as removing the background and putting it on a pure white background. Um, what I'm about to show you is that this machine does all of that for us and cuts the time that it takes to do this kind of stuff literally in half. So I'm going to quickly turn off the software of this machine just to show you kind of what um, a photo would look like if I was taking it um, in the traditional way. So I just took this photo in real time. You can see it's, it's pretty. Um, it shows the product well, but you can see the turntable. The background is in a pure white. Um, it isn't perfect. And this is the photo I would traditionally get doing photography um, the original way. Um, and then I would have to then go in and edit this whole photo and remove the background. However, if I hop back to um, our, our little studio here, I'm gonna turn on the software and I'm gonna take another picture. And then what you're seeing here is um, the, a picture with the software turned on. So you can see that it automatically, we call it extracted the background. It removed the background that it photographed in camera and replaced it with a pure white background. What's really cool about that is because there's no information there, I can go in here and change that background color to anything I want it to be. Um, you know, this, somebody, people probably don't want uh, this, you know, vibrant color background, but we can swap that background to anything. We can make it a gym locker room. We can make it a track and field setting. We can make it anything we want it to be. And we call that a composite. Um, so it's really cool what this technology does. It automatically does that editing for us and saves us a, a significant amount of time. I can also pre-program mult multiple, um, multiple kind of locations on my virtual representation of my turntable here. So I can hit enter. And if I want four angles of the shoe photographed, I can just pre-program those four angles. And if we have maybe a hundred shoes that we're shooting and we want the same exact angles for every single one, um, we can have it run through and do all of those photos kind of on its own. You know, I can go off and take a sip of coffee or, you know, check my email or something like that while this is doing its thing. And just in those, you know, 20 seconds that I've been talking, you can see in the bottom popping up those four images that were just automatically taken with just me standing here talking to you guys. And these are extracted, color corrected, and ready to send off to our customers. What's really cool is that we can use that same technology of pre-programming those um, shots and do what we call an interactive 360 spin. And essentially all this is, is instead of choosing four positions to take a photo with, we choose equal intervals around the entire turntable and take a photo every 10 degrees or every 15 degrees. And then we put all those photos together um, and uh, use some, um, some coding and some other types, um, uh, some other things to kind of stitch them together and make an interactable 360. And I will quickly show you what one of those looks like because it takes about five minutes to pre-program those. So that's what this is. So I'm actually clicking and dragging and interacting with this product here. So when we're talking about giving a customer, you know, the next best thing to actually touching the product, clicking and dragging and interacting with this project, with this product, um, that's really the next best way of doing it. So here's a lighting fixture. Here's that same shoe we were just looking at. Um, and here's a, you know, handbag that we did. So these are all just examples of what this 360 looks like. And this is definitely our most popular service. It's definitely the cutting edge of e-commerce. Um, even Amazon is getting close to almost requiring this type of, uh, this type of content, this type of, um, interactivity. So it's, a uh, it's a really popular service that, um, that we're doing right now. Finally, we do video. Um, we do very clean, simple on white video in this booth, rotations, pans, tilts, close-ups, um, and I won't record one in real time, but I show you one that I did um, before we hopped on this call. And it would just be something, um, one moment. I just gotta play this video. There we go. So it would just be something like this, a very clean rotation or something, just another way to showcase your product. So we typically wouldn't see somebody do a 360 and this, but it's whatever the preference of the customer is. So that's what we do. That's a five minute, very quick um, recap of um, what we do here. Uh, it's a lot, it can be a lot more. It typically is a lot more than that, but that's, you know, that's the gist of it. And really the reason we're showing you this stuff, first of all, it's fun. It's fun to see this kind of stuff. It's fun to see how the bread is made. Um, but 
uh, it's also important to talk about this because it kind of shows you kind of why we are talking about um, what we're talking about today, which is e-commerce. So let's get right into that. Okay. Before we do, did anybody have questions specifically about um, what you just saw with the demo? I just wanted to make sure if anyone was unclear about anything I showed in the demo, um, I answered those questions. I'll just give maybe a couple seconds if any pop through. Probably just give it maybe 30 seconds, and if none come, none come through, we'll uh, we'll move on, and then we'll uh, wait till the questions at the end of the um, at the end of the presentation as well. I just wanted to make sure to give people the chance to ask questions about the demo specifically if they had any. Okay, I'm not seeing any come through, but if any do in the next couple minutes, I'll just kind of pause what I'm talking about and address those because um, I see them come up. Okay. So first, we're going to start talking about the e-commerce industry, kind of trends and um, the direction it's going. And keep in mind, when I say e-commerce, e what I'm talking about is all consumer product sales conducted online. So that's kind of what I mean when I talk about when I when I talk about e-commerce. Okay, so when we talk about the problem and the solution of um, of of e of e, of e-commerce, so. The problem here is that customers are shopping online more. And I'm gonna talk about um, all that in much more detail a little later, but with customers kind of prioritizing shopping online rather than in stores, um, we're seeing businesses are missing out on sales um, because customers aren't necessarily comfortable converting online. And what I mean by that is, um, if a business really hasn't prioritized their e-commerce section, um, whether that's photography or their copy, their reviews, um, things like that, then um, the customer will be less comfortable making that purchase because they have less information about the product that they're looking at, um, rather than being in the store where they can touch and feel it or ask questions to the owner of the store. So essentially what we're doing is we're solving pro a problem for businesses that they don't even know they have. And that's where that kind of consultative nature of learning about their brand and kind of talking about how we can help you comes in. And that's, and that's the solution here. So um, we definitely aren't a transactional studio. We aren't just a studio where you place an order online, you don't talk to anybody the whole time, we shoot your products blindly and that's it. Um, we try to build a relationship with you, have a conversation about what are you looking for? What's your vision? What's your brand story? Um, and yeah, we really learn how to tell a story with your brand. And we end, up, we end up doing that by producing professional quality, high res, compelling imagery that captivates your customers. And really what we're talking about is helping them convert. Because when we're talking about product photography, we're talking about giving your customers as much information as we possibly can um, to help them feel more comfortable purchasing something online. For something like um, you know, a $20 pair of shoes, maybe not so, big, so much of a big deal. But if we're talking about larger items that cost a lot more money, people want more information about what they're buying. Let's talk about the trends and where the uh, where the industry is going. So, uh, when, let's talk a little bit about uh, the consumer expectations. So, um, I think in my experience in retail and e-commerce, I've definitely learned that even the customers don't know just how picky they are. They're used to seeing the most beautiful, high-res, elegant photos. They're used to these, you know, commercials that are absolutely perfect, whether it's Nike or Apple or Walmart or Target. They're used to seeing this visual content that is just so beautiful. So these big guys, they've, they've, they've essentially raised the bar for online visual content. Um, the thing is, they have the money and the resources to do it. I came from a studio where, um, you know, millions and millions of dollars into the studio and a 30 person team wasn't much that wasn't that that was nothing to them. They have the resources to do these things. Um, but what about all the other businesses in the world? Um, what about the small to medium sized companies who don't necessarily have the resources to do that? So when we're talking about the e-commerce industry, um, we're really talking about a digital era and how the consumers are transitioning to more of this um, online shopping model. So if we take a look at this graph here, I really this is a really interesting graph to me. So this graph is e-commerce as a share of total US um, retail sales for the last 10 years. And I believe the most recent point on this graph was actually um, last quarter. So it's a pretty relevant graph. This is done by Vox. And you can see um, a clear upward trend of consumer shopping online even before COVID hit. Obviously, you can see that spike on the right-hand side. 
that is when COVID happened and more and more people shopped online. But I think um, the important thing to get from this graph is that the trend was going to an e-commerce model even before COVID hit. Um, obviously when COVID happened, significantly more people began shopping online and we'll see that drop off a little bit, but even after you know the post-pandemic era, we are going to see more and more people continue to uh, continue to shop online. So um, essentially, you know, if you draw one thing from this slide, it's that if you told me, you know, before the pandemic that you were prioritizing your visual content in your e-commerce store, I would say your head's in the right place. But if you told me that today, I would tell you you're doing what you need to do just to stay afloat. So it's very necessary right now to really be prioritizing your e-commerce um, store um, as this digital era continues to grow. And just to um, you know, expand on that even more, I'll give you a little bit of more um, numbers and statistics about um, post-COVID e-commerce, kind of the direction things are probably going after this pandemic hopefully subsides soon. So, uh, and this is a study um, conducted by Shopify that I'm refer referencing from. So 85% of customers shopped online during the pandemic. Um, that's kind of, you know, a reason, one of the reasons why we came to be is we saw just how many people were shopping online during this time and how many businesses, small and medium sized businesses, businesses were being forced to reprioritize their business model from a brick and mortar store to a website. Um, and we're seeing that here in the statistics. 40% uh, of people said they will shop online more frequently after the pandemic has subsided. Online sales of luxury goods increased 40% in 2020. Um, in 2020, e-commerce reached an all-time high of 16.5% of all global retails, uh, retail sales. We saw that number represented in that um, graph I just showed you. And then in 2020, cross-border e-commerce sales uh, increased by 21%. So um, essentially, what this says to me is that the, not only was the trend going towards an e-commerce retail industry um, before COVID, but especially since COVID happened, it's almost taught more people what they were missing out on and how easy shopping online can be. The problem is we don't want the people who weren't necessarily prioritizing their website or e-commerce sales to fall behind because of that. And that's kind of what we're in the business of doing. Okay, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about visual storytelling in a digital area, era. So taking that digital era I just talked about um, and discussing how we can make a brand visual um, to best take advantage of this e-commerce world that we're in. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we've talked about how the fact that e-commerce is booming um, and we've showed you how our studio provides one of the services, you know, a service to, um, to, you know, take advantage of that. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about product photography as a customer experience. So when we're talking about product photography, we're essentially talking about giving customers as much information um, as possible to make them more comfortable in converting on the purchase. Um, this can be a variety of things. Obviously, we're in the business of things like photos and videos and 360 spins, giving a customer the best visual experience possible of that product they're looking at. But this goes further than that, stuff that we don't even do, which is um, really amazing copy or text on your website, really explaining that product well in your brand voice. Um, this can also mean reviews. I think it's really important to have um, actual customer testimonials about the products that um, I think there is a significant amount of customers out there who won't buy a product if there aren't public reviews about the, you know, people who are, from people who have actually used those products. And then awards, you know, what sort of uh, credibility do the products that you're selling have? So we're gonna do another quick poll here. Um, and this one will test actually how many people were uh, listening to that video we played earlier. <laughs> so uh, what does everyone think is the percentage of all online returns that are simply because the product the customer received looked different than it did in the online pictures? So when you receive a product, um, how many people, what, what percentage of all returns are because that product looked different than the photos they looked at? So we'll give everyone a moment to, uh, answer that question. Okay, are we seeing results come in? And I think Tom is gonna to share the results. Okay, so 50% said 19%, 50% said 25%. So the people that said 25%, you are correct. Um, actually a quarter of all online returns are just because the products look different than the actual real life, or sorry, the photos look different than the actual real life products. So 
when we walk up to a customer and say, we can't promise this, but essentially we've seen the statistics that say you can cut a quarter of your returns just from updating your product photography, um, people are pretty amazed at that number. And that's all just the customer experience. And we're gonna show you a couple examples of that. So um, what we like to do as we're shooting for some of our customers is pull some of their current product photography and then um, compare that to what we did for them. And this isn't to say how great we are, how amazing our photos are. I mean, hopefully you see that, but what we're trying to show here is that when you're given minimal information, you're less likely to buy, but when you're given more information, you're more likely to buy. So the photo you're seeing here is the photo we pulled from one of our, um, one of our clients' website before we did their product photography. Now the same product, this is what we did for them. And then we also, did multiple angles and then more information as well. So when we're looking at these images, you know, the one on the left, very low res, first of all, I think we can all see that. But also, um, I wouldn't know if this is kind of, uh, you know, an aged antique kind of bronze. Um, I don't really know what color that gemstone in the middle is, but then seeing the product in real life, I see that it's actually silver and it's more of a blue than a, um, than a turquoise or teal. So you know, when we're talking about customers being a little disappointed about what they received versus what they saw, um, this is what we're trying to do here. So, and then these two photos in the bottom, there is also um, a screw to kind of latch in this pendant on the back. So it's important to know that that comes with this product. And then we also um, do a digital scale for every one of these products for this specific client to sh get, show the customer what size this thing is. Is this thing 12 inches? Is it a half inch? How big is this thing? And here's another example. So we shoot for a few different um, lighting companies. So lighting fixtures, chandeliers, ceiling fans, um, products of that nature. Um, this is one of their products pulled directly from their website. You can see the colors are a little wonky. There's even maybe some corruption because of how low res the file is. This is what we did for them. So this is the same photo, but what we did. And then we all on top of that did these images as well. And these aren't even all the images we did. We also showed a close up of the back to show how these things are attached to the wall. So you can clearly see here, you know, would you be more likely to buy um, from this company if you just saw the image on the left or if you saw the five images on the right? So giving the customer more and more information to make them more comfortable with their purchase. Let's do another poll. So what percentage of consumers said that high quality photos and multiple angles of products are the only factor they consider when deciding to make a purchase? So not just a factor. I think we can all say that it's a factor. How many percent of, what percent of people said it's the only factor to their purchasing decision? And this is a study conducted. Um, they, it was a, by a company that looked at Etsy, Shopify, and eBay. Give a couple moments for those responses to come in. Okay, so we had um, some people say 45% and some say 60 um, when I first saw this statistic, I would have said the same thing, 45 or 60. Um, actually, the answer is C, 80%. Um, this specific study, 80% of people said that photos are the only thing they look at when they, uh, when they decide on making their purchase. I'm sure this can vary depending on what kind of products we're talking about. Um, but for this study specifically, yes, the answer is 80%, 80 which even surprised me. Okay. So let's talk even more about the customer experience. And keep in mind, when I'm talking about the customer experience, I'm talking about much more than just quality service at a fair price. I think maybe 10, 20 years ago, that is what the customer experience was. Walked into a store, you got great customer, customer service, you got your product for an awesome price, and that was a good experience. But today we're talking about a customer experience where you're not even seeing your customer. You have no idea who they are. You don't even know they're shopping with you. So how do, we, how, how do we kind of facilitate that really positive customer experience um, when it's so different these days? Um, the first important thing to note is that first impressions online are almost always visual, whether you're tuning into a New York Times article or you're going to a new website to find you know, a pair of shoes to buy, your first impression is almost always visual, a really captivating banner image, um, cool graphics or cool colors, seasonal colors, something like that. So, that first impression obviously is important. Retention rate these days online are, is very short. So you gotta keep that first impression positive and captivating. Uh, modern customers are 
also seeking more interactivity, stimulation, and new. They're literally looking for ways to interact with your website and be more than a viewer. Um, we cover that with those 360 spins I showed you. It's like I said, it's the next best thing to actually holding the product in your hands. Um, but they're also looking for new content every time they log on. So maybe every month when they go to their favorite website, like Target or Walmart is, is doing this well, they see a new banner image or a new seasonal image or a new copy or new colors or a new twist on their logo for the holiday coming up. Um, all businesses should be doing that because your loyal customers are going to want to see new um, kind of captivating things every time they tune into you. Um, it's also important to note that online professionalism of a business is typically represented um, visually. So when somebody comes to your website and there isn't this captivating visual experience, um, that can kind of degrade the professionalism that the customer, you know, feels about your, about your company. Um, and that kind of bleeds into social media as well. I think we can, none of us can deny that there, that the majority of shoppers are not on social media and using social media even to shop sometime. But also on top of that, there are a lot of customers that when they tune into your website, they will also then look for your social media to kind of see what kind of brand you are, what kind of message you have, what's your inclusivity like. And if you don't have, and because social media is a visual experience, um, it's important that you have visual content for that social media because if people are going to be basing your brand on what you're you know, doing online with your social media, you've got to have images to do that. Um, also important that customers prefer photos and graphics over test uh, over text. Um, that's pretty simple. Um, so having you know more minimalistic website or social media feed or articles that prioritize photos and graphics over huge bodies of text. That's very important. And what all this does is it really um, this visual content takes businesses and turns them into brands. So. Um, you know, what I mean by that is when I think of a business, I think of more of a transactional service, but when I think of a brand, it's a company that, you know, the consumers follow, they're invested in, they're excited for the next product release, they're next, they're excited for the next announcement, they follow them, you know, Apple is a brand, Coca-Cola is a brand, but there are companies out there that aren't necessarily a brand, they're just a business. Okay, so we'll talk, we'll talk a little bit more about consumers. Um, consumers being online and how to use different sort of different types of visual content depending on where your customers are. So um, first and foremost, e-commerce product photos, those three photos you see on the bottom of this slide. Um, just clean on white elegant photos like I showed you earlier. These are the kind of photos you're going to want to use for your product pages or even on different online marketplaces such as Amazon and Walmart, which you know probably the majority of people are selling on these days. These are the photos you need to just show the fine details, the close-ups, the high-res um, details of your products. But then we can also talk about social media where you need to prioritize that stylized and lifestyle imagery that we talked about earlier and that you see here with the right-hand image. Um, I think a combination of both of those types of imagery really allow you to um, you know, hit customers that are in all places. So if a customer is on your e-commerce site on Amazon, um, you got them covered with these beautiful high-res images. But if they found you on social media or something, or maybe an advertisement, you want something to captivate them to kind of show the quality of your brand as well. Um, I think when you're when we're talking about people shopping and finding you on social media, because people move so quickly on social media, um, that also we're also talking about driving impulse purchasing, which can, which can be very um, influential for a brand. But it's important that you know your demographics. It's, it's important to know where to post these things. So if you do have social media presence already, that's awesome. But knowing what type of photos to put on what, um, what platform, as well as what demographics are on what platform is most important. So if you want to, you know, if you're posting to Facebook, you're going to be appealing and reaching um, a typically older audience. If you're posting to Instagram, it's going to be like a middle age to older audience. But then if you're prioritizing stuff like Snapchat and TikTok, you're gonna pr be prioritizing a much younger audience. So kind of knowing the demographics of these social media platforms and combining that with specific imagery to work best with those platforms um, is, is a way that companies can really nail it um, and drive sales. Okay. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about the, the justification of photography because that's definitely um, a hurdle, you know, we need to justify this cost. Um, I think this is definitely the biggest hurdle 
that we run into in our business. And I think that's just because product photography, it's not as clear. The, the ROI of product photography isn't as clear as other business expenses. So, um, you know, when we're talking about things like a marketing budget or hiring a new team member, their return on an investment for those things are very clear. But for photography, you're not really, it's not really clear what that ROI is. So how do you justify it? And I'm gonna start that with a bit of an anecdote. So, um, as I said earlier, I worked for Zulily.com down in Columbus. It was an online fashion retailer. I worked there for about five years managing the studio. Um, I handled, similar to my role here, day-to-day -day production, but also long-term creative, liaison between the studio and our merchandisers. So in 2019, while working for them, I conducted an experiment. In partnership with, the mer with a merchandising team, we curated a product line for 10 businesses and vendors, and every one of them just had one single low quality image for every product they sold. And these products for these 10 businesses ranged from apparel to jewelry, to furniture, to PPE and more. So a variety of products and we tracked those sales. I then had my photography team totally update the product photography for each of the 10 businesses. So multiple angles, high res images. And then we ran the exact same curation of products at the exact same time of the month with no other variables changing other than the imagery itself. So based on that information, what do you all think was the average increase of total sales across the 10 businesses tracked in this experiment? So how much did sales increase just based on the product photography as the only variable that changed? And I'll give you guys a few moments to come in with those results. Okay, cool. So it looks like uh, somebody said 25% and a few people said 50%. Um, so again, when I was doing this at Zulily, I was also very surprised. Um, and you can kind of see the trend here that all of the answers to these polls are typically much higher than expected. The answer actually is D, 75%. That blew me away. Granted, we had some vendors that literally doubled their sales across this test. Um, some that were closer to, you know, 40 or 50 percent, but it averaged out to 75 percent of those 10 businesses increased their, or sorry, yeah, those, across those 10 businesses, they increased their sales by an average of 75 percent, which is just mind-blowing to me, and if that doesn't justify it, um, then I don't know what does, but we will a little bit more. So <clears throat> we talked about the one justification of product photography, which is increasing in sales, there's also another part of it, which is that, you know, just based on the price point of your products, um, the product photography can pay for itself fairly quickly. Now, if you're selling very low um, retail priced products, it can be more difficult for that to justify that ROI. But if we're talking about maybe a hundred dollar pair of shoes, if you paid a hundred dollars for the product photography for one, for that one pair of shoes, even if just one or two people buys those shoes because of the new photos, they've already paid for themselves. So this, it's, you can justify it best with high price point items, handbags, jewelry, accessories, things like that. Um, but really you just, if, even if you just have a couple of sales because of that new photography, um, you're, you know, you're justifying that cost. But once we get past those two, there's, there's um, two more, you know, there's two more things we need to get over. And that is, um, doing it fast and doing it for a good price. So the key to producing photography efficiently is by increasing speed and lowering co costs. But the most important part of that is doing it without sacrificing quality. There are a lot of high production, low cost studios out there that don't prioritize their quality. We try to do that. And that's important because what's the point of investing in this stuff if the quality isn't high? So as far as doing it fast, the, you know, the issue is Every day your products aren't in market, you're losing sales. So if you don't have products, if you don't have photos of your products and you're just waiting for these photos to come back every day that you don't have your photos on your Amazon marketplace, you're losing sales. But also every day your products sit in the studio, they can't be sold. So that's a big problem. But then with the cost, um, you know, as I said earlier, the ROI of photography is less obvious than other business expenses. And a lot of businesses don't have the resources to do, um, to do it themselves when we're talking about the, tr the traditional way. So let's address the first point, speed. And we won't pitch ourselves too much, but when it comes to speed, long story short, we have you covered. Um, we promise a three-day turnaround. That's thanks to our um, automation equipment um, that really allows us to do high volume, fast paced, but maintain a high quality. Um, but also, you know, efficiencies and processes inspired from my retail experience that I've modified 
and kind of worked out the kinks and brought here to the studio. So I won't pitch us too much, but long story short, if you're worried about speed, don't, don't with us. But let's talk about the cost because that's the most important thing for every customer we have um, by far. So we have one last poll here. I know this is like a test for you guys. So when we first started this business venture, we analyzed the pricing of our top seven competitors. What do you all think was the average cost of photography per image across those seven studios? So if you're getting, you know, we're talking about per image, how many, how much does it cost for every image that's photographed? What's the average cost across our seven competitors? Wait for those results to come in. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think you guys are getting used to me trying to trick you with these high, high numbers and percentages. So we had somebody say $24 and somebody say $37. So the correct answer is D, $37.50. The average price per image of our competitors is $37.50. If you're taking five photos per product, you can do the math. That gets pretty astronomical. So let's talk about, um, and this is kind of the last thing we'll talk about with ROI, and then we'll kind of open up questions here in a moment. Um, so the cost breakdown. So if we're talking about the traditional large studio business model of a studio, we're talking, I didn't even put a dollar amount here because we're talking about salaried photographers and stylists, equipment costs, big studio buildings. We're talking tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you wanna hire a freelance photographer, the typical rates here in Ohio are about 250 to $400 an hour. And that's just for photography. That's not including the editing time. And then, like I said, our competitor average is 37.50 per image for this sort of high paced, um, high volume outsourced product photography business model. Our pricing is $25 an image. And that's our retail pricing. We only discount from there. We have what's called an enterprise plan, which essentially gives you a volume discount if you have more than 100 products. But we very intentionally came in at a price point significantly lower than not only our competitors, but every other you know, product photography option out there. But even if you don't use us, even if you don't choose to use us, um, I hope you can just learn that product photography will pay for itself through sales. Um, captivating imagery is 44% more likely to be shared on social media. And also high quality imagery paired with proper metadata and copy is also more likely to appear in Google search results, pop populate on Google. So there's one last justification about the cost of product photography. So thank you for sticking with me throughout this. Um, here's a quick summary. I hope, I hope you guys learned a few things. So in summary, um, online visual storytelling is more important now than ever before. Um, and with that, online sales will have to be prioritized even after the pandemic, um, because prioritizing photography is prioritizing your customers. I hope if you learn one thing from this, it's that the trend of the industry right now is going online. People want more and more online. They're buying online, especially during this pandemic. And you really have to prioritize that customer's um, experience online if you want the, sale, the sales to really increase with your online business model. Consumers want consistent, fresh, high quality content, poor imagery costs businesses money very directly. Um, and then product photography goes beyond this website sales. You know, it can be social media, email campaigns, advertising, marketing, there's so much photography can be used for. Um, and that product photography, professional product photography, it turns businesses into brands and it becomes, it turns your company into something that people want to follow and be invested in. So thank you guys for sticking with me. Um, that was a very quick kind of high level view of the e-commerce industry and how you might be able to benefit from it or how you should be thinking about it. Um, but if people did want more information, kind of going along with our consultative side of our brand, we do have a full blog on our website where we publish custom written articles that we produce in-house to kind of help you um, be more comfortable with justifying product photography and why you might need it. So um, this link, the, this deck will be made public to all of you. So you can click on any of these links to read up a little bit more about the points I made today. I also included some links um, about how our business model works as well as our pricing and portfolio. So you can see more of our work and our pricing. Um, and then we just have a quick contact page. If you wanna reach out to me, please do so at any time. Um, and then here's our website and feel free to follow us on social media. The support would be greatly appreciated. Um, that's all I have for today. Um, I didn't leave us much time for questions. We might have about five minutes, but did anybody have any questions about what they saw today? And we'll give you guys a couple of moments for those to trickle in.
I know I couldn't have rambled for that long without some questions. <clears throat> All right, so we're getting a question. What is the lowest price point you recommend for your services? Um, don't, uh, do you know who asked that, Tom? Oh, okay. Got it. Oh, I can see you in there. Sorry, I didn't know you were muted. So um, essentially, uh, I'm, I'm a little confused what you mean by that, but I'll reiterate kind of our pricing model. So we do char charge $25 per image. That's for just basic on white product photography. Um, but we do offer an enterprise plan, which is essentially if you have a high volume of products, we give you a 10, 15, 20, sometimes even 25% discount on your order to make it more affordable as a thank you for committing to such a you know high number of products that you're sending and you're, um, you're having a shoot. Um, the cost of the lifestyle or stylized imagery, that's always custom. And the reason we do that is because every shoot when we're talking about stylized is gonna be different. Um, and it's very important that I take the time to learn your brand and learn about your creative vision and what you're looking for and what you're trying to get out of a photo shoot with us. And then only then can I understand, okay, what's the time commitment? What props are we, are we gonna need to source? What models are, are we gonna need to hire? Um, so those quotes are always custom. Um, and then our 360 spins, those start at $74. So um, I think that's by far our most efficient, um, by far our most efficient and um, how do I say this? When you, when you compare it to the traditional price and time it takes to do a 360, it's night and day. Um, I think I, I, would, I would challenge you to find anybody that charges less than three or 400 bucks for a 360 spin that who doesn't have technology like this because it's very hard to do. Um, but we started $74. So we're very proud of that price point. Awesome. Thank you, Connor. Uh, I'm going to take my screen back just for the final slide, uh, but want to thank it. you guys for uh, an awesome presentation and a little uh, uh, taste of, uh, you know, e-commerce. I know when we uh, went and toured the studio, it was absolutely amazing. Uh, and what a, uh, you know, a great product that you guys have, uh, with or without a pandemic, certainly the, from an efficiency standpoint, uh, and I know I'm just as guilty as it's image first, uh, price point later, uh, when it comes to stuff, if I see something that's blurry or looks like it was clip art or what have you, it certainly, uh, certainly is a, is a no go, uh, you know, there, uh, you know, and then the next thing I'm looking at is, is reviews. So between those, you know, if you don't have the right image, I'm not going to the reviews. So it really is that, that initial point. So I want to thank you guys again, uh, Connor uh, and Samir and Mia uh, for you. the presentation. Um, on your screen now, you just see our uh, upcoming programs uh, next week. Uh, we've got something on workplace violence and, and you know, do you have a, a crisis plan, et cetera. And then our Solo Women in Business has uh, an awesome event about community marketing on collaboration, uh, you know, during these times. So uh, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, we will wrap it up uh, and have a great day, everybody. Thanks. Thank you very much, you guys, for tuning in. We really appreciate it.